So David Hilbert in 1900 proposed 23 open problems in mathematics, some of which are still unsolved, most important, famous of which is probably the Riemann hypothesis. You've thought about and presented about the Hilbert problems of computer vision. So let me ask, what do you today, I don't know when the last year you presented that, yeah. 2015, but versions of it, yeah. you're kind of the, the face and the spokesperson for computer vision. <laughs> It's your, yeah, it's your job to, to to state what the problem, the open problems are for the field. So, what today are the Hilbert problems of computer vision? Do you think? Let me pick pick one to which I regard as uh, clearly uh, clearly unsolved, which is uh, what I would call long form video understanding. So, so we have a video clip, and we want to understand. Uh, the behavior in there, in terms of agents, their goals, intentionality, and uh, make predictions about what might happen. Uh, you know, so so that that kind of understanding which go, goes away from atomic visual action. So so in the short range, the question is: Are you sitting? Are you standing? Are you catching a ball? Right. That we can do now. Or we, even if we can't do it fully accurately, we, if we can do it at 50%, maybe next year we'll do it at 65 and so forth. But I think the long range video understanding, I don't think we 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 can do to, well uh, today. And that means, so because, long- And it blends into cognition. That's the reason right. why it's challenging. And so you have to track, you have to understand the entities, you have to understand the entities, you have to track them and you have to have some kind of model of their behavior. Correct. And their and their behavior might be these are these are agents. So they are not just like passive objects, but they agents. So therefore, we they might they would exhibit goal directed behavior. Okay. So this is this is one area. Then I will talk about say understanding the world in three D. Now this may seem uh, paradoxical because in a way we have been able to do 3D understanding even like 30 years ago, right? But I don't think we currently have the richness of 3D understanding in our computer vision system that we would like. Because, uh, so let me elaborate on that a bit. So currently, we have two kinds of techniques which are not fully unified. So there are the kinds of techniques from multi-view geometry that you have multiple pictures of a scene and you do a reconstruction using stereoscopic vision or structure for motion. But these techniques do not, uh, they, they totally fail if you just have a single view because they are relying on this, uh, this multiple view geometry. Okay, then we have some techniques that we have developed in the computer vision community which try to guess 3D from single views. And these techniques are based on, on a supervised learning and they are based on having at training time 3D models of objects available. Right. And this is completely unnatural supervision, right? That's not, CAD models are not injected into your brain. <laughs> okay, yes. so what would I like? What I would like would be a kind of uh, learning as you move around the world uh, notion of 3D. Well, so yeah. so, uh, so we, we have our, a succession of visual experiences. And from those, we, so in as part of that, I might see a chair from different viewpoints or a table from viewpoint, different viewpoints and so on. Now, as part, that enables me to build some internal representation. And then next time, I just see a single photograph and it may not even be of that chair, it's of some other chair. And I have a guess of what its 3D shape is like. So you're almost learning the CAD model, kind of. Uh, yeah, implicitly. I mean, implicitly. I mean, the CAD model need not be in the same form as used by computer graphics it's programs. Hidden, hidden in the representation. It's somehow. hidden in the representation. The ability to predict new views, and what I would see if I went to such and such position. By the way, on a on a small tangent on that, are you uncomfortable? Are you okay or comfortable with 
neural networks that do achieve visual understanding, that do, for example, achieve this kind of 3D understanding, and you don't know how they, you don't know the rep. You're not able to interest, but you're not able to uh, visualize or understand or interact with the representation. So the fact that they're not or may not be explainable. Yeah, I think that's fine. <laughs> I, to me, that is uh, so. Uh, so let me put some caveats on that. So it depends on the setting. So first of all, I think uh, uh, the. Uh, the, uh, we, uh, humans are not explainable. So yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. So we we uh, uh, one human to another human is not fully explainable. I think there are settings where explainability matters, and these might these are these might be, for example, questions on medical diagnosis. So I am in a setting where maybe the doctor, maybe a computer program has made a certain diagnosis, and then. Depending on the diagnosis, perhaps I should have treatment A or treatment B, right? So now, is the computer program's diagnosis based on data, which was data collected of for American males who are in their 30s and 40s, and maybe not so relevant to me? Maybe it is relevant, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And we, I mean, in Medical diagnosis, we have major issues to do with the reference class. So we may have acquired statistics from one group of people and applying it to a different group of people who may not share all the same characteristics. The data might have, there might be error bars in the prediction. So that prediction should really be taken with a huge grain of salt. And But this has an impact on what treatments uh, should be picked. Right, so right. so there are settings where I want to know more than just this is the answer. But what I acknowledge is that the so 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 so, so I in that sense explainability and interpretability may matter. It's about giving error bounds and a better sense of the quality of the decision. Where what I where I'm willing to sacrifice interpretability is that I believe that. Uh, there can be systems which can be highly performant, but which are internally black boxes. And, and that seems to be where it's headed. Some of the best performing systems are essentially black boxes, yeah. uh, fundamentally but, but, by their construction. But you and I are, are black boxes to each other. Yeah, so the nice thing about the black boxes we are is, so we ourselves are black boxes, but we're also, the, the those of us who are charming, are able to convince others, like explain the black, what's going on inside the black box with narratives, with stories. So in some sense, uh, neural networks don't have to actually explain what's going on inside. They just have to come up with stories, real or fake, that convince you that uh, they know what's going on. And I'm sure we can do that. We can create <laughs> those neural those stories. Neural networks can create those stories. Yeah. They, they, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and the transformer will be involved. 